next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911. Then, a runaway roller coaster mangles a young man. Bring him back here. Bring him back here. Be there as rescuers fight to save his leg and his life on Rescue 911. On September 2nd, 1991, parents and children were sharing a final afternoon of fun before the end of the summer season at Lakemont Amusement Park in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Sherry Donella's daughter, Lindsay, had saved one of her favorite rides for last. We were at the concession stand and Lindsay asked if she could go on the little roller coaster and I said, fine. All right. It was the last day of work for 17-year-old Chris Whitfield at his summer job. Go the ride. Kevin Holland and his father were on their way to meet Kevin's wife and little boy at the carousel. It was still late. My son probably wasn't ready to leave yet. So we thought we'll put him on one more kid ride, and then we'll do the miniature golf thing and then boogie. right before it would catch hold onto the chain that would take it up. He must have tugged maybe five, six, seven times on the car itself. if not three screams and when I heard my baby my baby I started to pick up the pace a little bit when I rounded the bend something was not right that's when I saw his leg move okay now we're gonna get him down okay okay son listen to me now we're gonna try to get you down okay I saw the ground and it was covered in blood I knew that he could bleed to death but I couldn't get him off the car he was so tense he was wrapped around it so I kind of started directing people what to do. I guess learned that from being an air traffic controller. I'm going to have to let go, OK? I'm going to do I'm going to press in. When I press and say, OK, you let go. OK, because I'm going to have you, all right? You ready? OK. I got you. I got you. Now. There you go. Let's bring it back here. Let's bring it back here. I got you now. OK, I know what it was. What was left of his leg was next to his hip. 
I couldn't afford to have him see that because if he saw that, I figured that he wasn't going to be as calm as he was anymore. Now look, I want you to look right here, okay? okay. Just look okay. at me for a second, okay. right? All right? You're going to be okay. 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 All right. Listen, I need some ice. I need some water. I need blankets, anything. And everybody else, just calm down, okay? I noticed that there was some blood still coming out rapidly. I learned through health class, clear back in high school, that we have lymph nodes in our body. And if you push on a lymph node, it'll cut off the circulation of the blood uh, to other parts of your body. There's two under your armpits, there's two in your legs, and I think there's three other ones. Anybody, I'm, I'm going to press a little bit, okay? Uh -huh. And I pushed as hard as I could on what was left of his leg. I was asking him questions to make sure that he was coherent. We, we spent a lifetime in about 20 minutes. Park paramedic Nancy Fulton was the first rescue worker on the scene. As I scan on down his leg, the foot is intact, but the area between the foot and the knee, there is nothing. Be advised, need you to expedite at this time. We have a 17 I had a young kid who basically was bleeding to death. You ready? Okay. I sat next to his shoulders and held his hand. I wouldn't want somebody to turn their back on my child. So I couldn't do it to him. What do you like to do? Uh, electronics. Electronics? Yeah. We just talked a little bit more, and I was okay until he asked me, am I going to lose my legs? Just a second. You just hold on. Okay. That was kind of tough because um, I said, no, you're going to be fine. You're going to be all right. And uh, I had to kind of like lie to him, and that was tough for me to do because I'm not used to doing that to people. Tonight, a horrifying scene inside a house leaves two small children dead. What could be the cause of this terrible tragedy? Don't miss Dr. G, Medical Examiner, tonight on Discovery Health Channel. This is much more than a job for me. Sunday, catch back-to-back -back episodes of Dr. G, Medical Examiner. The people I see in the morning didn't know that they were going to die last night. This top medical examiner has critics hooked. Find out for yourself why Dr. G is considered fascinating and compassionate. You're the one putting the pieces together. Dr. G, Medical Examiner. Watch back-to-back -back episodes Sunday starting at 9 with an all-new episode coming March 11th on Discovery Health Channel. Rescue 911 continues next on Discovery Health Channel. Within 10 minutes of the accident, paramedic Dave Cooper and his partner arrived. This guy was white. He was wet. He was pasty. His blood pressure could have bottomed out at any time. Whether he was going to live or die, I couldn't tell. So yeah. Let's get another blood pressure here. Uh -huh. no, okay, there, squeeze. If it hurts, you squeeze, okay? You can't hurt me. Remember that. Uh -huh. That was our little, little contact. And uh, I was still holding Chris's hand even after he got onto the board, I believe. Okay. I said, you're going to have to go now. And uh, he said, okay. I said, I'll see you later. Front wheels. Everybody take it easy, okay? I was walking out. I looked at my wife, and she looked at me. And uh, I said, that boy's going to lose his leg. That's when it really sunk in. And uh, I, I kind of gathered myself a little bit. And uh, I said, he could, he could die. I don't think I cried quite so hard in a long, long time. And I, I put my hand my arm around my dad because I needed help getting out of the park. He's here. OK. Easy, easy, guys. Easy. Take a turn here. Right. By the time Chris arrived at Mercy Hospital, his blood pressure was dangerously low. The emergency physician Pradip Swain took charge of his care. We immediately poured blood into his system, and all of a sudden I found that the blood, blood draping on my pants, it is coming through the mass trousers. So immediately I said, get me, he must have to clamp that artery. And all of a sudden, he just bottomed out. Grace, can you feel I'm clutching you? I think he's going to die. My God, he has got 60 years of life in front of him. Chris's parents, Kurt and Bonnie Whitfield, had been at a family birthday party when they received a call from the hospital. I knew whatever the activity was going on was serious. I saw his one sneaker on the floor. He was covered up. And he just said he had a bad injury to his leg. 
the helicopter came in. He's going to the trauma center in Johnstown. The parents are here. Probably they'll never see him again. I said, you know, take only one second. Hold the hand, give him a hug, give him a kiss. Uh, I'm not real religious. Well, I believe in God. I ask him. He's 17. Give him a chance. If you give him his leg back, he can have my life. Chris was transported to the trauma unit of Kanima Valley Memorial Hospital, 40 miles away. But there was nothing doctors there could do to save his leg. I had a tough time. I know whenever he was born, when all the kids were born, any mother counts the baby's toes, counts the baby's fingers. But I would rather deal with whatever we have to deal with, you know, if it's like being amputated, than to have been making funeral arrangements. I wanted to see Chris really bad, but uh, it took two and a half to three days to find out what had happened. It was kind of a mix of emotions a little bit. I wasn't sure if I really belonged. I wasn't family, but I wanted to know things. Now, there's nobody else in the hallway but me and Chris. So I walked over to him. I looked at him. And I said, you don't remember me, do you? And uh, he started to cry. He looked at me and he said, you saved my life, didn't you? And it was kind of like that was a recognition thing. And he squeezed my hand. And I said, no, I was just there. You know, the doctors and the paramedics did a great job, but I wouldn't have made it that far if it wasn't for Kevin. I think if you're doing, like, 20 here, you can increase the weight a little. Eight months later, Chris is adjusting to the use of an artificial limb. I had met a guy who has a prosthesis. He had told me to wear a prosthesis is no different than wearing a pair of glasses. I'd still do the things I used to. An investigation conducted by state and federal agencies determined the Lake Mont Park Kitty Coaster to be safe. I'll get up and dance at my prom. I've danced with my girlfriend before since my accident. Looks funny, but she doesn't feel different towards me. I'm still me. Pick it. Ready? If this was the only way to be his friend, I'd rather not know him. But it allowed us the opportunity to become friends. And what we went through is what has bonded us. No one knows at what moment you step onto somebody's life like this. To see a mangled foot and to put pressure on that, that takes a hell of a courage to do that. They are the greatest heroes than sending someone to space, you know. We all should take first aid and CPR courses every year. By learning basic life-saving techniques, we might be able to save the life of someone we love. This series is dedicated to all the men and women who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.